The ROG Ally is finally out and I finally have it. But there are some glaring issues with it that are difficult to ignore. This is truly an amazing device for what it is, and I think that we should definitely see more like it soon. I've really enjoyed my time with it. However, is this actually good enough? Does it justify the premium pricing over the Steam Deck? Well, introducing the Asus ROG Ally. Let's dive right in. The exterior design consists of plastic for the entirety of the build, minus the actual screen. This is definitely going to be a hefty device that looks really good and shows off that ROG branding really nicely. I think that regarding the construction and the aesthetics, they did a really fantastic job. On the front, you're going to find your usual buttons with more of an Xbox layout and a D-pad that is actually a little bit questionable. You also got some navigation buttons for Windows, but you will also find the stereo speakers. On top, you will find your shoulder buttons, exhaust vents, a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, what I believe to be an accessory port, a USB-C port, a volume rocker, and a sleep wake button with a fingerprint sensor embedded onto it. On the back, you will find two additional mappable buttons and a lot more branding along with cooling. So let's go ahead and talk about the hardware for a little bit. The analog sticks feel far too loose to me even after extended use, but the smooth top feels quite nice actually. However, I would really have liked to see more resistance on the thumbsticks. Otherwise, the face buttons feel great and are very crisp to use, but the D-pad is just a bit questionable. They went with this Xbox 360 controller style and I don't really like it. It works definitely, but it's not really my taste and I think that it is the real issue with it because the button presses are actually pretty solid and it is pretty good for rolling I would say for the most part. It's just not what I would personally like, as I prefer the, the D-pad on, on the Steam Deck, for example. But in theory, this should be really good, and I'm sure that a lot of people will like it. Overall, the hardware can be a mixed bag, but the build is definitely up to par. I personally am on the side of liking it. This device features a 7-inch 1920x1080 IPS display running at 120Hz. This is insane and completely overkill for handheld. It looks great, though, and it does feel really smooth. The colors really pop and every game looks amazing on it. However, this is where I would probably have to cut some corners on this device just to make it a little bit cheaper. Because 1080p is definitely observable and it will show it in games, the 120Hz is mostly beneficial for specific types of games. And I can guarantee you that that is what is killing the battery so much on this thing. Not everyone will benefit from a 120Hz necessarily, even if it is objectively better better than 60 hertz. Now this is objectively just a better screen to say the least. And a couple of other great things that I can't say about it is that it is touch enabled, which is great for navigating windows and that kind of thing. But overall, I do really like this screen. Now the speakers on this thing are actually amazing. They absolutely nailed it here because we've got a stereo set that sounds really good. They get really loud and have a great amount of depth for what they are. I'm genuinely impressed. Have a listen. This device is running on Windows 11, and of course, it looks and runs beautifully. I appreciate having Windows instead of Linux, personally, so I actually prefer this solution. There is always Steam Big Picture mode, after all. However, the most important software to note here is going to be the Armory Crate from Asus. This is going to be used to directly control aspects on this device for starters. You can even easily launch your Steam games from it, which is pretty cool. You can also adjust the fan speed or DB lights from the thumbsticks, uh, TDP on this device, among many other things. I appreciate having the software and would consider it to be essential here. You can even make direct adjustments to the system settings through it, which is nice to have. It feels like a pretty good hub, to me at least. This device features an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme CPU, Radeon RDNA 3 graphics with 4GB of VRAM, 16GB of RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, which is super fast as well as being expandable, but there should be a 256GB version being released at some point, and it also features a 40 watt hour battery. Now, all of these things should make this device quite powerful, and we're actually going to find out how powerful it is through these game tests. Now, let's get into the actual game tests 
best performance. Now, let's begin with something super simple to run, and then slowly ramp up to really demanding games. Warning, I will be testing a lot of different Final Fantasy games, starting with Final Fantasy VI. The Pixel Remaster. As expected, at full resolution, it still runs incredibly well without any issues at all to speak of. Obviously, a game like this will run without hiccups, so you shouldn't worry that these pixel-based games won't run very well on a device like this, because this is absolutely nothing to the ROG ally, if you were wondering. So yeah, the Pixel Remaster will run absolutely beautifully on this device. And the same will essentially go for something like Hollow Knight as well. This game will run very smoothly on the ally and still look incredible while going at it. This is a fantastic indie machine without a doubt, as it can handle any indie game I've thrown at it, even if I don't play that many myself. But something like this will be no problem for the ally to handle, and this will be a recurring theme for a while until we get to the more demanding games, but it's always good to still talk about the less demanding games every now and then. Now moving on to Persona 4 Golden, you will also get flawless performance here, and this will be the case with all PlayStation 2 era games, or in this case, Vita era games. But either way, you will get a very smooth 60 FPS without any issues, which is great. This is not a very demanding game as is, but it is still good to test out so that you can see what a game like this would look like on PC, or I guess on a handheld like this one. It looks really good and runs really well at 1080p, so I think that they did a great job here. Next is Final Fantasy X, which is a game that I've played over and over again. Still not my favorite Final Fantasy though. And if you've been a fan of this channel for a while, then you already know exactly which one my favorite is. However, performance-wise, you will get flawless performance. There are no stutters on, or issues at all to speak of that I can point out. Everything is running really nicely here, and it all looks great. For this game in particular, since you're running Windows, I would actually consider installing some mods for it to really get the most out of it. The ally should be able to handle running those mods without any issues. So following this, we're actually moving on to a different generation of gaming with Dark Souls Remastered. This game looks really good on this device, and it is running at 60fps, 1080p, with settings going pretty high actually. The lighting, the shading, the overall sharpness of this game makes me want to replay it on this device specifically because it just looks that good and it runs that well. I absolutely love this and I think that they also did a really good job with this. Dark Souls Remastered is a total joy to play on this device. Now, Final Fantasy XIII actually did have some issues to speak of here and there, but they were pretty minor and mostly just happened when first launching the game. Those issues were just minor stuttering and they're here and there, which wasn't really a huge deal, but it can be immersion breaking for some. Either way, I was fairly satisfied with the performance that I got here and really don't have too much to complain about. However, it is worth noting that this could be resolved with some tweaking in the settings, so I really would wouldn't really uh, worry so much about it because there is some adjusting to be done and I think that it can definitely be accomplished to get smoother performance. Now jumping up another generation, we have Doom. This is a native Vulcan title, so obviously it ran really well and this was the only game that I tested that actually benefited from being played on a, dis on a display with a higher refresh rate than 60. This game is really, really smooth to play on here and it exhibited no issues in terms of performance. Doom may look to be pretty demanding, but with the right hardware to back it up, it can run smooth as butter, even on lower end machines. So this was no surprise to me here. Now for a game that needed a lot of help running, we've actually got Valkyrie Elysium. This game is extremely demanding from what I have seen, as many handhelds just struggle with this game. At 1080p, lowest settings and everything possible set to turned off, you would still encounter a lot of poppin' and you would still get around 30 FPS. This just isn't the, really the machine to play this game on at all, which is a huge shame considering that I've been traveling with my gaming gear and I've been meaning to play this game. Either way, I can't really recommend this system for this game as it is just too demanding or even maybe just poorly optimized if anything, but Valkyrie Elysium isn't really so easy to run on a lot of different devices. But with something like Final Fantasy XV, you would get pretty close to great performance. Actually, it is pretty smooth and this is running at 1080p with an unlocked frame rate, average settings, and some NVIDIA features turned off entirely. This game looked really good on the screen and it actually ran quite nicely. There aren't many performance 
performance issues to speak of here either and this surprised me because this device is loading a giant open world with a lot of monsters roaming around but it all looks great and I love it. I would absolutely play Final Fantasy XV on this device for long periods of time if the battery could only handle it. But overall, this is pretty good for a game that's this intensive. Now the final game I will be testing today is going to be Final Fantasy VII Remake. This game requires the absolute lowest settings in order for it to run smoothly at 30 frames per second. But it doesn't look all that bad. It honestly looks quite presentable on the screen of this size. I'd feel comfortable playing this game on this handle too, and I think that these compromises are okay. On the Steam Deck, this game would crash from time to time, but on the ROG Ally, I can expect it to handle this game just fine. However, this is where we can see the limitations of the hardware, and I think that that's really okay. At least it is playable, and we get to see what it can do and maybe what it can't uh, do so well. When it comes to battery life, we're looking at a device that, with everything enabled, will run at around less than two hours, maybe one and a half hours, which is a shame, but a lot of devices like this struggle with the battery. You can push it further if you play at lower res resolutions, lower refresh rate, turn off the RGB lighting, adjust the TDP, etc. But that will be something that I experiment with for a follow-up video because this one is already long enough. So to finally conclude this video, I would like to end it by saying this. In terms of raw performance, I think that this device is worth it over the Steam Deck, honestly. But there were some rather poor decisions made with this device that could have made it better for portable use. The super loose thumbsticks don't do it any favors, and neither does the battery life on this device. But overall, this is a better option than the, than the Steam Deck if raw power is what you're looking for. Plus, you can always tweak things to get more out of it. So from my perspective, I think that it is worth it for the games that I play. However, I need to test emulation on this too, so there will be a follow-up video on this one addressing emulation only. So do stay tuned for that. But what's my verdict? I actually really like the Ally and will be tweaking it to maximize my time with it. So yes, I can strongly recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end because I do really appreciate it. Now I am going to be making sure to leave um, affiliate links to Best Buy ac actually and hopefully this is something that will be useful to you guys just to be able to have that readily available. Only the 512 model is available right now so the 700 dollars model but i would say that the extra storage could really be worth it because the storage is really fast and really nice on this device so yeah links to that down below if you use my link you would be helping out the channel a lot actually so i would really appreciate it and also please make sure to follow me on twitch where i've been streaming a little bit more often and you will also find me on instagram where i post every now and then <laughs> but with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you for watching and until next time Enjoy.